We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon and good evening for those of you who are joining us remotely. Uh, welcome to the session, Keep Our Children Safe in the Digital World. My name is Magdalena Wrzosek, I'm from EY, and I will have a privilege to moderate this session. And with us, we have distinguished guests, and I will uh, give them the floor to present themselves. Thank you, Van. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Piotr Ciepiera. I think it's a, it's a great privilege to be here, but also, I think, responsibility um, of myself a little bit. Um, so today I'll be representing uh, two sectors, uh, private sector and uh, non-profit sector. In terms of uh, private sector, on a daily basis, I'm a partner and a global leader for architecture, engineering, and emerging tech security at EY. And within this responsibility, we're supporting organization critical infrastructure operators, essential services operators um, to protect from uh, cyber threats. But also we are supporting governments, we are supporting standardization bodies uh, to create guidelines, regulations related to cybersecurity. Uh, on the nonprofit side, I'm also uh, chairman of the uh, Committee of uh, International Information System Security um, Certification uh, Body. Uh, ICS Square, um, and the aim of this organization is to train and certify certify um, um, security professionals. Um, so that's the second. Um, I think also I'm a father. I'm a father of two boys, age nine and eleven. So I think very relevant topic for them. So I will be combining today this free perspective. Thank you. Hello. My name is Jacek Goko. I am uh, the president of uh, the UKE, it's the Office of Electronic Communications in Poland. And I'm uh, still the teacher, assistant professor at university, technical university. And also I'm the father and grandfather. Uh, there's this uh, stream dedicated to the children and to, to security of the children is very important for, I think, all parents, for all people, because the children are our future. Thank you. Bye. Um. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Antonio Rytel. I am the deputy head of the GovTech Center in the uh, Chancellery of the Prime Minister of Poland. Uh, we deal with uh, everything pertaining to the digital transformation of the Poland public sector. Uh, also, uh, quite recently, uh, with uh, digital education and innovative education. Uh, I'm also wearing two hats. Uh, my one hat, uh, I just briefed you on, but the other one is an academic one. I, I'm also um, working at Stanford University on uh, inter alia cybersecurity. Uh, I'm not a father nor a grandfather, but uh, we, we do deal with issues, so hopefully I'll offer some perspective. And I'm also very glad to be here at the IGF uh, and to speak to such a distinguished multinational audience. Thank you. And we have also two guests uh, who are joining us remotely. Milia, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you? Yes, we can hear you very well. Can you please present yourself to our audience? Yes. Um, so my name is Milia Lakso, um, and I work with uh, UNICEF and the Office of Innovation of UNICEF particularly. Um, I sit with the Venture Fund of the Uni UNICEF Innovation, um, and our the um, goal is really to uh, in, invest and explore emerging open source technologies uh, that could benefit children. And from that point of view, really looking at that kind of two to five year horizon in the future and what is emerging and how, how can we invest in, in digital solutions that can really benefit uh, children in the coming years. Uh, very, very glad to be joining uh, this panel this morning. Thank you for joining us. And we also have Fabio from Enisa. I don't know, he, he's not able to join us yet. Okay, so we will, we will uh, continue with the panel and wait for him to join as well. 
So, um, because the, the subject of today's session is very broad, we would like to focus for cyber skills among children and young, uh, young uh, people. And how can we work among, uh, together uh, Different with, with different sector to, to make uh, make this uh, more um, make this gap which we have uh, in cyber skills uh, disappear or maybe a little bit smaller. Um, two interesting reports. The one uh, was uh, presented by ENISA, European Agen Agency for Cybersecurity, just before the pandemic, and it was about the sh shortage of cyber skills between the children also and young. And uh, the second was um, published just after the pandemic a few weeks ago, which show exactly how during the pandemic, the cyber skills shortage was a problem for everyone, not only uh, in the education uh, uh, as such, but also that we don't have an expert because we don't have the cyber skills among young and children. Then we, have, we don't have enough cybersecurity experts who can support the safe and security in the internet. Uh, so the first question will be for Piotr. Um, what was the main observation regarding cyber, uh, cyber security safety uh, during the pandemic? Uh, okay, thank you for that question. Uh, obviously, I think um, we are missing cyber security skills among I mean, uh, adults as well. But I think what, what is really important is that pandemic uh, time really changed uh, the way our children using the internet. Actually, when you look at the statistics, over 1 billion children are, are doing the remote learning. So basically, we have a lot of um, examples. We are, we are pushing our children, kids, uh, to virtual world. And for many of those, they were, those was actually the first time they were um, witnessing, they were experiencing internet. Today, it is, it is said that one on, uh, in three internet users are uh, children below 18 years old, right? So we have a lot of... Of, of, of children over there. And um, for us, maybe for adults, it's obvious that we are using social media. For them, it's something new. But also, uh, uh, video streaming uh, platforms, this is also something new. And to be honest, um, I was, I was um, talking to one of my uh, friends, and he was really uh, surprised and actually a little bit shocked because uh, well, his daughter um, received a link from a, um, uh, on, the, on the lessons uh, music lessons with a song. It is, you know, for us, it's something really obvious. And I was really surprised why he's so shocked. And he said, you know, it was the first time she actually clicked the link and she realized that there's a whole world, you know, the whole platform with videos. And within two hours, she was clicking the videos she, you know, she wasn't supposed to see, right? So probably we're not realizing that even the first encounter, the first um, usage of the internet may be, uh, actually something that may, may lead to the, uh, to the uh, wrong situation. So um, obviously looking again at the statistics today, only 12% of the children uh, are using uh, internet less than uh, one hour. The rest 88% actually using more and even 11% using more than nine hours a day. So we can, we can think that they're using it more and more. And obviously, this is not a safe place, right? So looking again, um, what we are, we are seeing, 28% of the children saying they have the password stolen, 28%. So you can, you can think what is happening with their account is, is, is being intercepted. Uh, again, 35% saying my device was breached. Something, something happened to my device. And 30%, 40%, sorry, four out of 10 kids saying they were already talking with stranger over internet, four out of 10. So definitely this is, this is the time for us to act because we cannot really wait till high school to teach about cybersecurity. We actually need to teach about it before that, even before the first usage of the, of the internet. And again, I think it's, it's, it's working both, both ways because today, I mean, we are talking about it as adults. Uh, realistically, we need to uh, teach our children because they will protect us in the future. And again, very quick example, but you know, actually the, the uh, realized story from two months ago, um, very quick one. I was driving a car and somebody called me. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm looking, this is the, the, the number from Austria. And gentleman uh, I'm picking up and gentleman saying, Mr. Chipiel, I said, okay, yeah. Uh, I'm calling from hotel XYZ. 
I have a reservation. This is the number of rooms. This is the, um, uh, the all the things related to that. I'm confirming. And he said, you know, there's a problem with your credit card. And I just realized my credit card is about to expire. So probably this is the case. And I'm saying, I'm driving a car. Please call me back later. In the back seat, there's my, my younger um, uh, boy, right? He's eight years old at that time. And he's saying, hey, hey, Dad, do you really know this person? Do you want to trust him and give the credit card number to him? I said, like, well, probably I don't, right? But he was so like surprised that I'm actually considering it. He was actually warning me about it. And you know, actually, I called the hotel and they said we were having a cyber breach. And actually, a lot of, of information was stolen. And the attackers actually they they're calling our clients and they're trying to get this information. So the reason I'm saying this is that obviously we have a lot of discussion about cybersecurity in our house, but you know when we are investing in kids, they are giving back, right? So they can they will protect us, especially in this very emerging tech-oriented uh, society. So I guess it's like for them, but also for us eventually. Thank you. Thank you, um, Milia. Uh, what is your perspective about cybersecurity skills among children, and how can we build them? Um, thank you. So uh, many of many of the things just uh, surfaced by Peter really resonate with what, what we're seeing as well. Um, so as we know, you know, today more than ever, children's lives are being shaped behind a screen, and and we see both huge opportunities through digital skills as well as um, online online threats um, that we really need to and harms that we need to uh, be able to safeguard. Um, UNICEF and Gallup uh, very recently launched the Changing Childhood Project, which is a first survey to really ask multiple generations across the world um, on their views of the world and what is it like to be a child today. So a few interesting uh, points that one, I wanted to share today. On, on, on that um, survey, one of the things is that ma majority of young people see serious risks for children online. Uh, just as seeing violent or sexually ex explicit content. So this is up to 78% of the young people who have reported um, that as a risk. Or uh, being bullied, 79% uh, of young people report uh, having encountered that online. And also coming to your point uh, just now, just 17% of the young people say that they actually trust social media platforms a lot to provide accurate information. So, so also uh, to the point that young people uh, oftentimes are very, um, uh, do, do have more of that understanding in terms of, of um, how to um, uh, balance the information that they are receiving. And we know obviously that child safeguarding and protection online remain inadequate to support children and their families and the education systems to really prevent and respond to these risks and harms. Well, we see that, you know, obviously the tech solutions are, are crucial elements um, to respond to these threats. And, and really the way we kind of innovate and, and support innovation in our organization in such a way that the digital solutions should not do harm even at the very inception stage uh, that you just also uh, mentioned actually. Um, so it's one thing to kind of like monitor and police and put uh, policies and standards, but um, what really will kind of help us uh, uh, solve the problem is, is to ensure that the digital solutions are created and uh, designed from the get-go with the safety and security um, and the overall benefit of the end, end user in mind. And given that much of the underlying technology that exists today is proprietary to corporations, the, the willingness of corporations and ability to incorporate children's rights and, and kind of point of view uh, from the get-go is really, really key the way we see it. The way the UNICEF in Office of Innovation and, and our venture fund really um, does this, or one of the specific approaches to, to do this uh, is our steadfast commitment uh, to open source. So we explicitly advocate open source to enable greater impact in international development and cooperation 
um, and really helping to create and invest innovations that, that support um, safer solutions. I'll give one example, uh, a recent example. So as we, uh, we very well know, cyberbullying is one of the pressing concerns that we see for children online. So recently uh, we teamed up with um, uh, the kid of the year from Time Magazine, um, Gitanjali Rao, uh, who had developed Kindly. It's a digital solution that aims uh, to end cyberbullying and make children feel safer. Um, and it leverages the latest advances um, in AI and other technologies to empower children to themselves solve this, this challenge. So basically it's an open source API that, that uses, uses machine learning to detect cyberbullying uh, intent in text-based messages. So when a child uh, sends you know, message over any, any messaging platform, the API, the, the, the technology will kind of um, give them real-time feedback on whether the text they have typed is potentially you know, toxic, contains something that can be interpreted at, as bullying. And this really helps children to reconsider what they've, you know, typed in real time and learn learn on uh, those kind of skills um, in real time. Again, this is an open source uh, solution, open source API that we're developing, and that can then be easily kind of taken um, up by by other organizations, by governments, uh, by the private sector to to integrate um, into their solutions. Thank you. And I just got information that Fabio is with us. Fabio, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, I can hear you, but something happened with the voice. Uh, I don't know, it's like, oh. yeah, in the room something changed. It's not loud enough, I think. Can we fix it? Can you hear me better? Or? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello, Fabio. Okay. Uh, Hello. Can, you, can you say a few words uh, about you because you, you you didn't have an opportunity yeah. yet. Sorry, first, because I, I had a problem to connect. And um, about me, I am uh, Fabio Di Franco. I'm Italian and I work in ENISA. ENISA is the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity. And my role there is to lead the group that work on cyber skills and, and cyber education, higher education, uh, most importantly. And our goal is. Uh, to strive from, for a cross-sectorial and inclusive multi-stakeholder cooperation. So I am very happy to be here and talk with uh, uh, the amazing panel that you created about to what Anisa has been doing in this uh, topic. Okay, and the question for you, so um, I mentioned at the very beginning two reports that Anisa developed about uh, cyber security shortage uh, in skills and gap in cybersecurity skills. Can you please elaborate a little bit about that? And um, maybe do you have, uh, as a representative of the ENISA, any idea how we actually can attract young and children uh, to, to uh, learn mo more about cybersecurity and get more cyber skills? Yes, ENISA has a series of initiatives about uh, cybersecurity for kids. One more important, is the European Cybersecurity Month. This initiative is together with uh, the European Commission and the member state. And ESA is uh, mainly maintaining the website, which has become the one-stop shop for collecting awareness initiative. The message of this year, for example, is think before you click. This is important for kids, it's important to, to everyone, for, it's important uh, because everyone is rushing and uh, sometimes malicious user using this approach to make uh, people uh, clicking on the wrong link. The European Cybersecurity Month, through video, social campaign, online games, and infographics, promotes the safer use of the internet. For more uh, teenagers, so, older uh, kids, let's say, and is organized the European cybersecurity competition. This is mainly a competition between young individuals coming from different uh, member states, aggregated as a team representing the country, like imagine a European Cup, 
which compete in solving cybersecurity related tasks from different cybersecurity domains. This year, we had the final in Prague and around 300 students uh, representing 20 member states come together and uh, fight for uh, achieving the goal of making Europe more cyber secure. In 2022, we will have an, an international challenge. So uh, members, teams from all over the world, representative their own area, will compete in Athens in June 2022. And also we will invite schools to assist to some of these events, local schools, in the way that uh, the students will understand which are the opportunities in cybersecurity, how to join cybersecurity, what to study. And uh, also we use, uh, we are training at the moment the European team, the group which will represent uh, uh, Europe. There are 100 students which at the moment are uh, studying how to, to upgrade the skill in cybersecurity. And we will use this person to become ambassador, ambassador for other person in the way that they can be interested to cybersecurity if they want. In particular, it is very important for women ambassador because there is a gender diversity issue in in cybersecurity, we know from our statistic that only 20% of the graduates are uh, women. So overall, this effort, we think that they contribute to reduce the skill gap and attract younger and, diverse, and gender diversity in the cybersecurity topic. Thank you. Um, so we heard the international perspective and international data, and now I would like to uh, ask Director Antoni about the Polish perspective. What do you, what can we see in Poland regarding cyber skills among young and children, and uh, how would we, it was reflected during the pandemic? Yes, uh, thank you for this question. I, um, I think it's really something which. Uh, will in the future be looked uh, upon as a pivotal moment in the way we view digital skills, especially among uh, young people, students and teenagers. Um, I think first we need to distinguish between um, the cybersecurity and social technical security. So the level of awareness of the younger generations uh, in terms of vulnerabilities, attacks, uh, and the threats which are commonly considered cybersecurity threats, such as downloading content from the internet, um, such as clicking on malicious links or, or uh, responding to phishing emails, those kind of things. Uh, the awareness of the younger generations is much higher than uh, the ones of uh, the parents' generation, so to say. Uh, this is what this is the finding of a report which uh, one of our research institutes uh, published a few months back. Uh, but on the other hand, there is perhaps a a more crucial um, sphere of cybersecurity, which is a social technical security, uh, which means uh, being how vulnerable are the children to cyberbullying, to misinformation, uh, to all those to to poisonous and toxic content on the internet. Um, and unfortunately, the prevalence of those occurrences uh, has much increased in the last couple of years. Pretty much in every category, we're seeing an increase in the number of people who say, I've fallen victim to X, Y, and Z type of uh, malicious internet activity. None of them, or most of them, uh, did not uh, entail an actual breach of security. Um, so... So this is the bad news, uh, but there are a few good news. So the first one is that uh, the youngsters have a much higher rate of knowing whom to contact. So they can contact their peers. This is actually one of the, the largest categories. Uh, they can contact their teachers. They can contact specialist authorities, of course. Um, and more and more of them are actually doing something. So. Uh, there is a slight decrease in the number of teenagers who have fallen victim to some sort of incident, be it bullying, be it uh, 
be it an actual breach of, sec of, uh, of security, and have done nothing about it. So it's still about one third, so it's obviously not enough. Well, we want this rate to drop down to zero, but uh, the sole fact that the awareness of the existence of resources uh, is there uh, is already an optimistic trend. Uh, and finally, uh, one thing which we're also seeing um, is a large discrepancy between the uh, the parents' generation, so to say, and the student generation. Um, as uh, others have said as well, I think uh, we're already at the end of this age when uh, the elderly were the ones teaching the younger uh, the the younger ones in terms of how to use technology. I think this at this point we're already at a stage when. Uh, during the five years it takes to train a teacher, in Poland at least, uh, probably so much new technology will emerge that it is likely that a class will know more than their teacher. And this is something which we'll probably have to get used to. Um, this, is, this is a trend which occurs all over the planet, really. Uh, and I think that uh, we just need to harness it. We need to um, view this as an opportunity, uh, and we need to adapt to this trend because well, the actual proficiency in using technology may be uh, more prevalent in younger generations, then the awareness of the social context of how it is used, um, what can it mean that uh, someone, what can someone mean by sending a particular message, uh, and what can those lead to is actually something which uh, just comes with experience. So our our belief is that uh, the the know-how of a uh, the private sector, which obviously manufactures and keeps um, most of the solutions that everyone uses, uh, as well as uh, obviously us as in the in the public sector, which um, has uh, a, a a bit larger purview over especially education. Uh, but I think that. The, the main goal that I think we we're looking at is to um, switch our mindset towards from being proficient in the use of technology to being proficient in the responsibilities of technology uh, and the consequences that uh, it uh, it may bring. But luckily, we're going in the right direction. But I think that this is something which will never. It, this is a journey without a finish line, uh, with more and more technologies emerging. Uh, but this is something we'll have to cope with. This is just the price of progress. Thank you. Um, regarding the switching our minds to the security, uh, I was wondering because Mr. Ogo, you are representing the sector which is like very important uh, in terms of cybersecurity telecoms, right? Maybe here is the role uh, somehow to, to raise this awareness. Do you think it's possible uh, for telecom as delivers of the internet, right? Uh, to to support uh, this whole process of building awareness among the children and the young people. Thank you for these questions. Uh, uh, I think the telecommunication market is specific today. Uh, during pandemia and uh, new technology, uh, we base on uh, solution as as a, as a sector. We base on a solution uh, when we create new services, a new model. This new model based on new behavior, new tools, uh, we support it as a, as a services. Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, it's specific uh, situation. It's uh, two really, for, for both streams, for operators, how to prepare more safety services, for safety, of course, for people, especially for young people, because they are open for, for all uh, information and they are uh, open for the web. The second way is how to prepare from the point of view of the operators because they based on the, the, the business. They they try to, to earn money, uh, which really, which way we, we, we can discuss it. Uh, and as a, as a moderator, as a regulator of the market, uh, we try to organize, really we start to organize special kind of uh, uh, center uh, typical ISAC dedicated for uh, sectoral sectoral means telecommunication sector, and so this uh, center as all ISACs uh, 
normally we discuss with uh, four MNOs which signed and uh, assigned this uh, agreement as a, as a, as a beginning uh, because we started uh, last month really it's 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 future uh, it's uh, we discuss about two streams the main of course change uh, the information uh, create new ideas how new procedure it's regular it's formal very very strong etc very hardly for, for for the user but we can discuss about how to prepare the service, the new service, based on the, the uh, activity and uh, behaviors young young people, based on the school, based on the uh, their habits and uh, with parental controls. Uh, but how we create how we create the services, uh, very safety and very open for for young people. And this is that and we can uh, discuss about new formal regulation the the legacy how to prepare new new service but of, of course uh open for the market but safety for the users special end users uh, i think we, we discussed today about the children but we have two uh, very uh, important uh, areas the, the the young people and the old people the seniors is i think sometimes it's the same market similar maybe not the same but very similar um, and uh, this is this is uh, the mainstream for this ISA, for the UKE, for the organization, for the uh, communication between operators, vendors, because the, in the background of the operators there are vendors, of course, the producers, the developers, because we we should start really create safety services uh, at the beginning, absolutely in the beginning when we uh, will create the assumpt to to how to create the service, we can be okay. We our user end user could be the child very very open young people the second way is the education edu uh, educational part uh, activity of operator and regulator but this uh, i think the discussion for the other other question Thank you. Uh, we have six minutes left, so um, I, I would like to, to do some remarks, fi fi final remarks by the panel. So it, it seems like the um, building cybersecurity skills and awareness among young and children is, is a team job, right? Not from one sector only, not from only from the public administration, not only from the private sector. We, we need joint uh, efforts to do it. So my question for everyone, and here would be separated uh, for, for, for different levels, like what should we do together? How can we support each other to in, in this process? And maybe we will start from international level. So pa Fabio, Emilia, what do you think about it? What, what kind of action should be taken on the international level to make sure that we, we have this action in progress? Fabio, sure. Emilia? Should I, should I jump in first? So yeah. UNICEF, um, together with um, a host of other organizations that work in this space, have really, especially in this, you know, um, uh, context of the of, of the pandemic and this sh huge shift to to online, identified really five key things uh, we should be doing together. First is really kind of like working to empower children online, which we've already mentioned here quite a lot. The other is supporting parents and caregivers to help uh, children stay safe online. So some of the things that we've done um, in, in partnerships with the Global Partnerships to End Violence, um, as well as ITU, uh, was to launch a call for applications for companies um, that use uh, frontier technologies to um, identify these um, digital tools for children online safety, uh, which we'll be announcing um, soon um, in the beginning of uh, 2022, a cohort of, of startup solutions that are kind of exploring those front frontier technologies uh, in this regard. Thirdly, uh, it's really important to provide a safe online learning experience for students. So uh, the learning space is obviously one that has really you know, shifted a lot uh, in this space and, and working together to really provide that is, is key. Some of the things, as I mentioned, that we're doing um, together with, with a lot of um, 
other partners is is building um, digital um, open source digital public goods. There is a, a vetted uh, group of digital learning tools already available um, on the Digital Public Goods Alliance uh, platform. We're also building a toolkit um, on personalized uh, online learning tools in the, that regard. Um, finally, we need to make online safe, uh, platforms safe and accessible for children. Um, again, coming back to, to the responsibility of companies that are developing these as well as obviously finally strengthening national re prevention response and support services together. So those would be really the key, key things uh, we would like to um, surface um, in that regard. Thank you very much. Fabio, can we hear what you think about it? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So ENISA is the most multi-stakeholder uh, agency and uh, will try to empower the people. So our goal is uh, to create a bit of a organization in cybersecurity because cybersecurity is a multidisciplinary topic. So our goal is to make companies and uh, people and uh, training organization to understand better the cybersecurity market. How to do so? We think that uh, we, uh, should clarify the roles uh, as well as the competence needed for in cybersecurity. And this is will, if we clarify this, we create a common language across uh, all domains, all sectors, and, uh, and all the European Union. We are able to understand how the cybersecurity is evolving since it's very dynamic topic, and also to target initiative to solve a specific problem, a specific issue. For example, uh, uh, we don't have a matrix in place to understanding how assessing a cybersecurity initiative, an awareness initiative. We have a matrix, but it's very difficult to, to measure. And what we are trying to do with this uh, multi-stakeholder group is to create a common lexicon of roles and competencies and based on this, also identify metrics where we can identify which competencies are more important than others and uh, or more requested, more requested by the market. And this is uh, next year, I will tell you that we will come up with uh, the first uh, framework, uh, which will help a company to attract uh, people, the job that the roles that they need with the skills that they need, and individuals can understand better what they need to study in order to uh, get their job. So this is uh, from uh, the European um, perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have one minute left, so we need to be very brief. But taking into account what our international guests said um, about the international level, what is happening, what needs to be done here in Poland uh, from public administration perspective? Like what exactly, how can, for example, uh, private sector support you in this action? Um, and on both regulatory level as a regulator of the telecom and also as public administration. So GovTech and all the action you are taking uh, in this area. Who, who first? Whatever you like. <laughs> okay, maybe I, thank you. Uh, I think that the most important thing was we should present the young people as a, as a regulator. We can support it mm -hmm. by the education way. Uh, of course, the, I think most important is uh, the form of the presentation of the information, because normally we uh, explain using the um, typical head, which is uh, uh, they, they use the mouse and uh, explain how it is dangerous, etc. I think we, we should prepare new new uh, channel for the communication for example gaming the same habits but more safety with safety and with dangerous the present what could happen when you as a young people will go the other way not not exactly safety way uh, i think as a as a, as a um, uke we organize some and support some workshop with young people normal in normally um, uh, 
two years ago, of, co of course, uh, we organized normally. Today we try to uh, organize online, but uh, I think next time we will organize normally uh, with the organization, the workshop, with the contact with the young people, because the contact and the, the way how, how we can show them uh, how we can create, how we can organize and what it means safety for the, your colleagues, not only for you, because the, the, this area is very, very uh, important for uh, our uh, contact with the people. We can sometimes, we can use the words, which is not so good for other ways, uh, because uh, like a uh, really fake, it's, it's a tragedy and hate, and it's tragedy for some young people, but it's uh, open for the rest and all, oh, I'm terrible and they, they reaction so no so good. We, we should prepare them uh, they are, uh, in the responsible way. We can create open because we need the services, but still safe services. That is only our support. Okay, um, so I'll try to be very brief. So first, uh, common vocabulary and knowledge sharing. Uh, Fabio referred to this, uh, I absolutely agree. Uh, so we do need to speak with one voice. Uh, also, the public sector does not control the internet. It's something which uh, is uh, not really regulated in terms of uh, who can access what. So we do not always get first-hand knowledge about every possible threat. We can fight them, but we, in order to fight them, we need to know about them. So if they're reported uh, and if children are encouraged to report them, we'll be able to act. Second of all, uh, innovation, so technical, uh, technological innovation. Uh, we as GovTech have uh, actually started from uh, easing procurement of uh, sophisticated technologies into the public sector. So there are ways to do this in a way which is friendly to both parties, which sort of respects their own uh, specific way of doing things. Uh, so definitely the tools, uh, we very welcome the innovation and it's something which uh, is uh, is something which really could give us an edge in terms of fighting those um, pathologies of the internet. Uh, and third of all, uh, we do need to work together on the sort of charting of the future technologies. Uh, for instance, we've launched the uh, this initiative where every school in Poland will have 3D printers, it will have microcontrollers in there. Uh, obviously, very useful technologies, but a huge destructive potential as well. Uh, if someone misuses them. So uh, bo both in terms of vendors and other users and manufacturers, we really need to speak uh, with sort of one voice to identify, contain and eliminate the risk and educate on, their, uh, on, on the possibilities of misuse and ways uh, of fighting them. So this would be it and many thanks for, for the invitation once again. Thank you. And finally, Piotr, what private sector can bring to the table? Yeah, thank you. Um, so first of all, I think um, each se sector separately is not enough, really. I mean, uh, uh, everyone is actually doing something. But to be honest, we need to have like a triple helix approach, right? If you if you um, uh, know it, it's basically government, industry and universities, right? This is very well known approach. But basically, as you can see, we have all the pieces of the puzzles, right? We also like as, as ICS, for instance, we have created game, uh, Garfield, Garfield Cybersecurity Adventures, basically for kids, 6 to, to 11 with uh, this, this uh, famous cat, let's say. But we, we're, we're lacking scale. We're lacking scale. So of course, uh, this was created in English, so we need the localization. I think the private sector can help, uh, for instance, with localization, with translation of those materials. But I think if we really want to have a scale, we first of all need to think about uh, introducing this as a formal subject, as a you know, history or biology to schools and also perform a regulatory requirement to have, let's say, train the trainers, support from um, uh, non-profit and, and private organization um, uh, to teach the, the, actually the teachers. Um, and then uh, we, can, we can, I think, uh, um, um, have the scale. Otherwise, and, and I know it for a fact, because we have created the, the, the um, trainings for seniors, for instance, and it was just very difficult to, uh, to approach to um, uh, convince uh, headmasters of the schools. Without the government support over here, I think it's, it will be difficult, but I think we have all the, all the things we need. I think cooperation, triple health cooperation will definitely um, should we lead the way. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think the final, uh, final remark will be let's do it together. Let's work together to make it better. 
Uh, thank you very much for attending the session. Uh, thank you for all the speakers here and also remotely. Thank you for all uh, everyone who joined us online and have a great day. Thank you so much.